Chinese Taipei wins the first gold medal in the Olympic Games in weightlifting category. Xi joins the United Nations preliminary meeting to discuss food security. Welcome back, Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. The first gold medal for Chinese Taipei in the Olympic Games has been secured by weightlifter Guo Xingchun. Overcoming challenges, she passed second place by 19 kilograms, scoring a total of 236 kilograms for the gold medal. She also holds the best records in snatch and cling and jerk. As the family members cheered and celebrated for weightlifter Guo Xingchun's gold medal, Taidong's county head arrived to join in on the celebration. Let us congratulate Guo Xingchun. I'm very happy. I want to congratulate Xingchun because she has fulfilled her wish. I'm thankful to everyone to supporting and encouraging her. Guo Xingchun's weightlifting career has come to an all-time high, reaching 103 kilograms in snatch, 133 kilograms in clean and jerk, and a total score of 236 kilograms. These records are a personal best. This is very simple for Xingchun. Moving on, I hope that she can encourage more young talents in Taiwan, sharing her experiences of challenges and defeats. As Taidong's county government live streamed Guo Xingchun's match, under all expectations, she received the first gold medal for Chinese Taipei. In Paraguay, winter is coming, and city volunteers brought food, blankets, and warm socks to visit the elderly in remote villages and islands. Besides delivering daily supplies, the volunteers also invited aid recipients to pray together. In addition, city volunteers visited a nursing home and a church. Let's join them there. Only 14 families live on an island, and canoes are the main means of transportation. It's winter, and volunteers brought food and warm clothes on their visit. Because of regular visits, residents will come to welcome volunteers as they arrive on shore. This time, a 94-year-old woman is missing. It turned out that she was recuperating at home due to a fall. The volunteers walked 12 kilometers to visit. In Fallet, there are also 21 families waiting for supplies. Volunteers set off early in the morning under a cold wind. During the pandemic, they maintain a safe distance, send supplies respectfully. Volunteers also invite them to pray. We come to share love and care with you. Please put your hands together to pray no matter what religion you are. Volunteers also come to visit Our Lady of Fatima Foundation. The foundation has provided nutritious lunches for hundreds of children three times a week for 17 years to reduce the burden on parents. Tsuji also provides meals. We put a lot of love to do one thing. The result is very rich. Love is omnipotent. As the weather is getting colder, volunteers personally put on blankets and warm socks and scarves on the elderly in the nursing homes to give them love and warmth. In Malaysia, the Jikita chapter has delivered high flow nasal canulas to a local hospital. In addition, they gave care packages to safeguard the health of frontline medical workers. The hospital superintendent praises the city's principle of accumulating everyone's strength to help the needy. Let's learn more. 12, 12. Total try including this. No, no, plus this is, it will be cash 18. Nah. In Malaysia, the increasing number of COVID-19 patients has put strain on the medical system. Siji Kara chapter has given high flow nasal cannulas to the medical workers so they can save the patients. What we use now, we just use high flow mask. High flow mask is not much, but with high flow nasal cannula can give at least 60 liter to 90 liter per minute of oxygen. We try to, 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 to not to intubate them uh, early as you said, because intubation also can cause a lot of complication. Besides medical equipment, Volunteers have also prepared care packages to safeguard the health of frontline medical professionals. 
After I treat patients, I must take a shower. I take showers several times a day. I do not want to count the number of times I take showers. I'm afraid to do so. I must stay clean and not bring bacteria home. Sutana Bahia Hospital has come into contact with Siji since last year. Besides being grateful to volunteers, the superintendent also recognizes the principle of saving up to help the less fortunate. Fantastic ideas actually to, to collect and really everybody can contribute on this. And then you are the one actually as a middleman actually goes and help people. That's a good idea. Fantastic ideas. Thank you so much on behalf of the hospital. <laughs> oh, feel very great. You can help people, even though with a small gesture like 10 cents, 20 cents. But as the day goes by, you will actually collect much more as what you have started with a small one. The medical supplies come with everyone's love. It is hoped that everyone will work together to get through the difficult pandemic period. In Kedah, Malaysia, as the pandemic situation worsens, a local hospital faces the problems of medical equipment and supply shortage. Fortunately, charity organizations, including Rotary Club, Lion Club, and Siji Kida Chapter, have worked together to support the hospital. Entrepreneur and city volunteer Huang Guorong gather help, bringing kind people to support medical workers in Malaysia. Frontline medical workers use their lives to safeguard citizens. We hope to bring more love and support to these frontline medical workers, bring them positive energy. No matter if it's manual labor or supplies, every charity group works together, supporting Malaysia's medical system. Everyone worked together, and we knew who was responsible for which supply. With teamwork, we can truly help hospitals. This is a very precious experience. The power of many is special. We're able to help more people in need. It's not about the amount, it's about our sincerity. I'm very moved. These medical workers need to face the danger of infection, yet they are still dedicated to complete their mission. What we can do is to care for them, to let them know that we will support them in their efforts to prevent the virus. Besides this, GPC's development founder, Fu Peng Kao, says that everyone should contribute in order to benefit our society. A person alone can achieve much, a whole team can achieve more. We are not fundraising, we are gathering people. Since the pandemic is getting serious, it's our responsibility now. And I hope that we can come out and bring our friends into volunteering. As the pandemic was serious in Malaysia, the MAF arrived in May establishing ICUs outside of a hospital in order to treat COVID-19 patients. City Foundation and other charity groups provided medical supplies. Therefore, the military gave out certificates to thank everyone for the support. Let's join them there. ICU Hospital Medan is the only COVID-19 dedicated hospital in Sabarang Parai. Malaysia's health ministry worked with the military, establishing an ICU unit outside of the hospital in order to reduce the stress load in the hospital. Actually, they really need protective clothing, masks and face shields. We will provide them these items. Today, we're invited here to understand what they need, what services they provide, and how our items will be put to use after donation. The military provided a thankful certificate to Ziji and other charity groups in their efforts to help with bringing medical supplies and equipment. Because setting up an ICU isn't an easy task, we must use a lot of equipment. Therefore, wherever there is a need, we will assist them with our devices. They're really thankful to the cooperation from Ziji, allowing them to work with less stress. Actually, we hope to support these frontline workers, giving them more energy. The 
City Foundation has joined an online preliminary meeting prior to the annual World Summit on Food Security. City representatives seized the opportunity to discuss with representatives of different nations about the problems of food security and possible solutions. Let's join them there. We are not on track to, to achieve the SDGs. We are not on track to reach the global nutrition targets and our global food system is broken. In the preliminary meeting prior to the World Summit on Food Security, representatives on different countries discuss ways to use the food system to create a better future. Many people talk about how we obtain food and their nutrients. A big issue is about vegetarianism and weather change. In addition, after the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, how can we help everyone return to their normal lives? Promoting vegetarianism can combat global warming. Mozambique volunteer Dennis Tsai shares stories on how people promote food security and their challenges. We give people food to help relieve their difficulties. However, we also give them seeds and teach them to cultivate the fields so they can help themselves. Then they can give of themselves to help other people. They must rely on their own strength to support themselves. As these representatives come together to share their ideas, it is hoped that a more secure and fair future can be created. In Indonesia, the pandemic situation is still serious, and the government has implemented movement restriction orders. As a result, more residents are facing financial difficulties. To reach out to these families, City Indonesia chapter has worked together with entrepreneurs for the third time to donate rice to the needy. This time, they'll be able to donate 35,000 tons of rice to 7 million families. Packing peanut crackers and banana chips, 53-year-old Tumini is ready to go out and sell snacks. However, after circling around the alleys, she has not been able to sell any snack. In the past, they would be sold out. However, few people are buying them now. I guess it is because due to the pandemic, people stopped buying snacks as they have trouble getting regular meals. After the pandemic broke out, people whose business is going down, like Tumini, has increased in Jakarta. Recently, more people are facing financial difficulties. Therefore, the city is working with the military and police to distribute rice to the needy. I'm grateful that I received rice. Now I can use the rice money to buy other daily supplies. In fact, since the pandemic broke out last year, City Indonesia has been carrying out its relief plan. Recently, they worked with entrepreneurs to raise funds and purchase 35,000 tons of rice to be distributed to 7 million families in need. During the pandemic period, many families are having financial difficulties. The government is unable to take care of these families. We entrepreneurs should pay back to society. Helping them is our responsibility. The rice donation ceremony is being observed by Presidential Office General Secretary, Indonesia Business Association Chairperson, Government Representatives and Entrepreneur Representatives. In fact, this is the third time that she has worked together with entrepreneurs to donate rice to families in need. During the distribution process, we also have to thank military personnel and police officers for their support. After receiving rice from Tsuji, we will distribute them quickly. Currently, on Java Island and Bali Island, there are many families who need the rice. The government enterprises and charity organizations have worked together to help families affected by the pandemic get through the tough times. Since the Hualien City Hospital admitted COVID-19 patients in May, the Dharma Masters of Jing Sibold and volunteers have sent snacks to the medical team of the dedicated ward every day. An art teacher from Tsuji School also guided students to express their gratitude to the medical worker through paintings. These paintings were used on the packaging of the snacks, warming the hearts of the medical workers. The rice balls are made diligently. Each one has rich ingredients and love. Contribute my little effort to cheer up the hardworking medical personnel. Since May, the Hualien Tsuji Medical Center's dedicated ward has been receiving snacks from the Jingsi Bo Dharma Masters and volunteers every day. Apart from enjoying the snacks, the healthcare workers also enjoy the paintings on the packaging, which are done by Tsuji school students. 
Every time when I get this, I will appreciate it for a long time. From the beginning until now, we have kept all the packages we received so far because we think they are very precious. I think it's quite interesting, and everyone can take this opportunity to learn that vegetarian food is actually very delicious. Knowing that his drawings has really been sent to the hands of the medical team, the child cannot help showing happiness on his face. We have asked the children to draw a lot of paintings to express their gratitude to healthcare workers. Then I thought if we could send these paintings to the hands of the medical team, it would be great. A piece of loving painting can replenish the physical strength of frontline medical workers, warming everyone's heart. In Shiji District, New Taipei City, two city volunteers opened a vegetarian restaurant during a level 3 alert. Although customers were not allowed to dine in, they switched to sell vegetarian lunchboxes so that more people can taste vegetarian food. Let's take a look at how the volunteers promote vegetarianism. <laughs> After washing the vegetables and preparing ingredients, the chef stirs up delicious vegetarian dishes. This is near open vegetarian restaurant in Shizu district. The owner chose to open business during the pandemic, hoping to allow more people to come across a plant-based diet. During this pandemic, if we have the chance, we have to open a restaurant to serve. We only care about whether we can present delicious vegetarian food to vegetarians, and even those who eat meat can come and eat our vegetarian food. Although when the restaurant opened, the pandemic was still on level 3 alert, and customers were not allowed to dine in, the owners wish to sell vegetarian lunch boxes. In less than a month, they are loyal customers who come every day. My grandson used to eat out. Recently, after he ate the vegetarian food in this shop, he found it suitable to his appetite. He has never eaten bitter gourd before, but now he is willing to eat it. In many people's minds, vegetarian food is very expensive. By selling lunch boxes, more people can enjoy vegetarian food and come into contact with a meat-based diet. During the pandemic, vegetarian restaurant owners operate the business in reverse, hoping that through their cooking skills, people can embrace vegetarianism and change their eating habits. In Taiwan, some of the street trees planted in the early days did not have complete safety assessments. Some county and city governments even introduced exotic trees to be planted as street trees. Until recent years, there have been more and more criticisms about inappropriate street trees. Follow our report to learn more. I'm now on Sengchang Road in Tainan City. More than 280 coconut trees are planted along the road. The coconut tree above is four stories high and has many coconuts. Through the camera, you can see its leaf sheath and coconuts have dropped everywhere. This coconut, which weighs two kilograms, if drops and hits pedestrians or passing vehicles, the consequences may be disastrous. When a coconut forest is made with plaster acceleration may exert a force of 10 kilograms. There have been two falling coconut injuries happened in Taiwan. A person was struck in the head and passed away unfortunately. The best way is when it blooms, just take it off to prevent problems caused by falling coconuts. Coconut trees are monocotyledonous plants, unlike most tree trees which have cambium layer. Therefore, if the trunk is damaged, it will continue to fester and become a dangerous tree. The towering coconut tree, which was broken into three pieces, struck a passerby who died later. In other countries, we don't see the use of royal palm as street tree. However, we often see it in Taiwan, so from the time of design, it has been wrong. The wrongly designed street trees also include jambalan. This is Section 3 of Jenkong Road in Tainan City. As it was reclaimed land back then, there were more than 500 salt-tolerant jambolan trees were planted on both sides of the road. Yet under the green street trees, there are hidden safety crises of passers-by.
。民众被搀扶一跛一跛地走上救护车，原来他骑车行经健康路，车轮碾过行道树大量落下的浆果，结果打滑，摔车受伤。So many fruit drops on the floor plus the rain. If the wheel presses on it, it will be slippery. 一大早，远景就站在马路边提醒骑士放慢速度，因为经过这条路一不小心容易摔车。When the jambalaya tree blooms and drops fruits, the entire canopy area, including the side where I stand, will have plenty of its berry fruits. There was a rider who applied for national compensation because of this. Causing serious injury. Under the javelin trees, accidents happen frequently, and the K-pop tree, which often causes allergies, has also become an unpopular street tree. 木棉花盛开，果实里的棉絮飘散在空中，宛如五月雪，充满浪漫气氛。While inhaling, sometimes I will get this cotton wool, making me sneeze easily. Currently, two children in the community were sent to the clinic because of respiratory allergies. There are hundreds of couple trees here. After they bloom and start to bear fruit, its cotton wool will fly like this. But for local residents, they are very distressed. Why? Because they are drying clothes, or air conditioner, or window are all filled with fluffy cotton wool. The blooming of street trees and flowers may be annoying, and they may also produce a bad odor, affecting the quality of life of many people. Hazel sterculia normally blooms in spring, about March to April. Its flower has a stinging flavor. Some people think that it smells like gas, while some people think it's like kitchen waste. It makes many people uncomfortable. It usually, will knock down its flowers before it blooms to reduce the odor. There are fewer and fewer street trees because the falling fruits, falling flowers, and bad odor. They have been removed one by one. However, people should plant new street trees species so as to keep the good greenery. In recent years, scholars have put forward the concept of right planting in the right place because unsuitable street trees may cause a public safety crisis. 行道树的树干距离。The trunk of the street tree is less than 20 centimeters away from the high voltage power lines, and there are new branches also. When it rains and passersby touches the street tree, you may get electric shock. Under the wire, we can see very strange Y-shaped trees. Yet new branches will come out from the cut side every year. During the typhoon, when the wind is strong, the branches will hook on the wires, which may cause short circuits. Power outage and electricity jumping may then occur. Man-made negligence in planting makes innocent tree species an obstacle to many. They may not escape being trimmed and removed. The fate of street trees has also become a topic of discussion. In Taiwan, Jiayi Government and Agricultural Research Institute have recognized a new breed of rice called Jiayi Fortune Rice. They plan to produce 10 tons of Jiayi Fortune Rice in the future so more people can enjoy healthy rice. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.